But first, let me show you how the U.S. government's coercion works. First, BASF was threatened by the Interparliamentary Alliance on China, it's IPAC, an international group of Western politicians founded by anti-China hawks such as Senator Marco Rubio, and whose purpose is essentially to pressure governments into containing China. Note that IPAC is funded by the NED, a CIA front which finances regime change operations in countries deemed to be hostile to the United States. It's also funded by George Soros Open Society, whose stated purpose is to help counter the threat China's growing influence poses to the rules-based order. The threat BAS received read, the credibility and integrity of your company are at stake, and we believe it is crucial for you to take swift and decisive action in addressing this matter. I don't think I need to elaborate on what happens when a country or company doesn't comply with the US government or the CIA's wishes. Unsurprisingly, IPAC bases its ultimatum to BASF to pull out of Xinjiang on a new report from the infamous Adrian Zenz, a well-known anti-China hawk an evangelic born-again Christian who has said, I feel very clearly led by God against Beijing. His report asserts, without any evidence, that BASF appears to be implicated in gross abuses of the Uyghur to a shocking degree. Working for the Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation, an anti-communist propaganda shop founded by the U.S. Congress, Zenz has consistently produced highly questionable research on Xinjiang that has not withstood basic scrutiny. But unsurprisingly, this hasn't prevented Western media and governments from frequently citing it as established fact. BASF has always conducted regular due diligence measures ever since opening factories in Xinjiang, including internal and external audits, and has not once found any evidence of any human right violations. BASF CEO Martin Brudemüller said these audits did not reveal any wrongdoings or something that would compromise our standards. Of course, IPAC didn't care and maintained maximum pressure on BASF until they caved and pulled the plug on their operations. What's crazy is that the U.S. is currently executing this exact same playbook with Germany's largest company, Volkswagen. In a coordinated attack, shortly after the victims of Communism Memorial Foundation and Adrian Zenz produced their allegations against BASF, IPAC followed up by threatening and coercing them into closing shop. And now, the victims of Communism Memorial Foundation have just brought literally exactly the same allegations against Volkswagen. It doesn't take a genius to figure out on what's really happening. This isn't the first time that Volkswagen has been baselessly accused of employing or being complicit in slave labor in Xinjiang. Over the years, Volkswagen never caved to the pressure and like BASF, conducted numerous audits they once again never found any forced labor. However, this time, it's looking like the German automaker will no longer be able to withstand the pressure and be forced to shut down its operations as well. Even crazier, other German automakers have been targeted as well, as the U.S. recently impounded thousands of Porsche, Audi, and Bentley cars merely because they were suspected of containing parts from Western China. Shockingly, these examples are far from isolated incidents. Since deciding that China needs to be contained and decoupled from, the United States has pressured everyone, from companies to countries, to fall in line and do the same even if it will destroy their economy. If you refuse or show reluctance, the U.S. government employs threats, coercion, and even sanctions. 